ladies and gentlemen, fun fact, you have a test tomorrow, 25 questions, all multiple choice, of course. It is your first test of quarter two. Your quiz today was the first grades that will be going in for quarter two, also very exciting. So tomorrow you have a test, 25 questions, all multiple choice. Your focus is being turned into me because Samantha Bennett is back and I am on top of my shit. My house is in order. There's no hurricanes coming. We have a break that's planned, not just some chaos in the middle of the week. You're killing me with your clicking. With that being said, I am back on my game, which means I'm holding you accountable because it's been a little light of late. It's over. First period got a lot of wrath because if you think the conversation about dropping AP World is over, you are delusional. I have till midterms to push you out. Yeah, Nina, midterms. She's like, holy yeah, Nina, I'm not worried about you, girl. You're crushing it. So proud. However, if you cannot do the basic things that I'm asking you, I'm going to push you out by after midterms. Is everyone clear? Yeah. Just because you made it through the first quarter does not mean, oh, Samantha Bennett is not going to push me out. No, I will. Now, I'm not asking for perfection. I am not asking you to get perfect A's on the wall. That is not it. But if you are not coming to class being able to retain the basic information that I taught you, not the hard stuff, but the basic stuff, I have no tolerance for that. Is everyone clear? Mm -hmm. You already know what the pattern of this class is. It is going to be the same. The same. It's the pace is the same. The assignments are the same. The amount of work is the same. It will get easier because you're used to it and go faster. Everything is the same. So if you think everything will get easier, no. My expectation is you're doing better. We are in quarter two. You survived quarter one. You learned what you needed to about the formatting and the pacing. Now I'm expecting you to really learn your content because you've already learned the content. You already learned the pacing. So I will have very little tolerance for people who aren't showing growth. If you keep getting the same test scores every single week, I don't care if they're low. I have a problem if they're the same. If something isn't working, do something different. If you aren't retaining the lectures, then every night after a lecture, you should look at your notes, yes? Go through it. Make sure you have a basic understanding. I'm not looking for perfection. I am a very flawed person. I am not looking for perfection. I'm looking for effort. Is everyone clear? Because I have a bunch of kids who are just coasting on the bottom and who are just barely making it but aren't trying. I'm over it. I'm over it. So I have till midterms to kick you out, <laughs> and I will. What? Why do you have to upset me about this? No, it's chaos. I've been getting text messages and updates, and it's now become a thing, which I kind of appreciate because I, uh, uh, I don't know if they care, but they do find me annoying. Mm -hmm. That's what they care about. They'd rather me shut up, you know? Let me do this. Just don't talk. Oh, I'm very good at not doing that. What? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, everything has gone in. Oh, yeah, I sent out an announcement yesterday right after school. You got two announcements yesterday from me. <laughs> I can't understand. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Uh, yes, let's make sure everyone is doing. So if you are struggling, all I'm asking you is for effort. And how am I going to see how much effort you're putting in is by board. So let's see if you actually learned anything yesterday. Take out your notes. Uh, take out your whiteboards. Let's go. What? On your whiteboard, please tell me what are my three revolutions in order? What are my three revolutions in order? Good. Evan. Seneca Falls Convention. 
ten, ten. What's up, Lucy? I have. Would you like a colorful one? Would that make you? Feel, would that bring you joy? Come on, Lucy. Let's do it. If yours still has some, it's fine. And I like Lucy better than everyone, so I will give Lucy one. You suffer. Thank you. On your whiteboard. Ooh, what color are you gonna get? On your whiteboard, please tell me what document comes out of the Seneca Falls Convention. What document comes out of the Seneca Falls Convention? What would you get, Lucy? What color? Pink? Oh. Declaration of Rights of Women is coming from France. It is Declaration of Sentiments. Write it down in your notes. I wasn't sure if I covered it yesterday. Write down in your notes next to Seneca Falls. Declaration of Sentiments is the document that comes out of Seneca Falls, and that is the one that lists their intentions. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what are the three stages of the French Revolution in order? What are the stages of the French Revolution in order? What is it, the document? Declaration of Sentiments, which is coming from Seneca Falls. Rigger, did you watch my video yesterday? No. I'm so glad I recorded it then. You should probably watch it, right? Wouldn't that make it easier? Yeah. Nina! There you go, on your whiteboard. What is the name of the document that comes out of the French Revolution? Sure. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the dude and then, oh, what is the name of the time period where people are challenging the way government is run and coming up with new ways? It's also going to improve the quality of life of the poor because people have become more aware. What is it, Giselle? Enlightenment. On your whiteboard, if you're only going to learn one enlightenment thinker, it's who? Good. Who is it, Lucy? And that pink marker looks lovely. Is it dead? Oh, my God. Yes, if you need a marker, come up and get it. But good God. On your whiteboard. Yes, why put it back in the pile, Evan? On your whiteboard, what is the name of the enlightenment thinker who believes in checks and balances and separation of power? Christian, you are killing it. Who is it, Christian? Montesquieu. Montesquieu. Who's the dude who believes in freedom of speech and freedom of religion? Good. What do you got, Emily? Voltaire. Voltaire. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the dude the British like, because everyone gives up their rights in order to have a more effective government. Wade. Hobbes. On your whiteboard, what lays the foundation for the Enlightenment? This time period of using reason and logic is going to help boost the Enlightenment for occurring. Caitlin. 
Scientific Revolution on your whiteboard. Uh, Please tell me, what is the name of, oh, what year does the American Revolution happen, people? Good, Haley. 1776, on your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the document that comes out of the American Revolution? Lucy! And Lucy knows that declaration real well, the AP Gov, right, Lucy? Don't say that to Lucy. All right, here we go. Open up your notes. We're doing Creole Revolution. Okay, here we go. So, Creole Revolutions are wars against the Spanish uh, uh, Spanish power in uh, South America and Central America. They said there's only three revolutions. There are three big revolutions in order. Then we have a bunch of small ones that trigger, because remember, colonialization is happening. Hi, let me get there, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, guys, there are three revolutions you have to know, which we discussed, in order. It goes American. There you go. Those are the three you have to know in order, and then there's a bunch of other revolutions that spin off of it in a whole bunch of chaos. So the Americans trigger all of this. Okay. against the Spanish. That's what we're talking about for Creole Revolution. You do not need to know the order, but you do need to know they're happening, and I'll tell you what you need. The first major person <coughs> is Simon Boliviar. Okay? Simon Boliviar is your first major. He leads seven revolutions himself. How many does George Washington lead? He leads seven revolutions by himself. He is a Creole. You need to know that. And if he's Creole, what is he? Ross? He's, um, <coughs> he's of, like, the color of his skin, yeah. White. He's white, but born in America, okay? He's a white boy, okay? So far, we've only had one, and really, we get three total that are led by indigenous or um, non-whites, what do you got? Simon Boliviar. So he's white? Or yeah, he's white, he's Creole. He's Creole, he's white, but born in the Americas. He is going to lead seven, which you already know. You need to know that he is incredibly inspired by the American Revolution. He is a fanboy of George Washington. He writes him like 40 letters in his life, and George Washington responds and writes him a letter back. And he literally dies with it in his pocket and read it every day, multiple times a day, and he just adored George Washington and have a picture of him. It is so cute. Is he George Washington or the American Revolution? Well, the American Revolution, a.k.a. George Washington. Okay, so you need to know that he writes. There are three, four things you need to know. One, he liberates seven countries. Two, you need to know the Jamaica letter. Underline it, circle it, whatever you got to do, you have to know. When you speak of Bolar, he writes the Jamaica letter. The Jamaica letter talks about how white people should join the cause for independence. <clears throat> it's pro-capitalism. So if it's pro-capitalism, it's anti- Perfect. <laughs> and then it is an outline of the goals of the rebellion. To join what? Like to join what? You repeat the whole thing. Guys, like it's like right here as well. Um, like there's a visual for a reason. Take a look. It's called the Jamaica letter. It is trying to get white people to join the rebellion. It is looking. It rejects. Uh, it's pro-capitalism. <coughs> 
and it outlines the goals of the revolution. We were supposed to read it for our primary this week, and it's actually beautifully written and is really inspiring to other revolutions that come after, and a lot of people use the formatting of the Jamaica letter for their causes. Um, it's really beautifully done. Okay, so, Bolivia, seven countries liberated, Jamaica letter. Third thing, you need to know the Grand Colombia. Is that another letter? Huh? Is it another letter? No. Oh. I'm just writing Grand Colombia right now. It is Bolivia's dream. <coughs> if it's a dream, did it happen? No. no. It's Bolivia's dream that all the countries he liberated, write it down, would form a federation. Oh my God, what country do we know formed a federation, Ryland? The U.S. The U.S., okay? So he wanted all of these small states to join together and form a United States. See, we're called the United States because we're individual states that have United. That's why we're called the United States, because we're states that, yeah. So he wanted the Grand Columbia to unify all of the seven countries he liberated into one federation, okay? It never happened. Write it down. never happens because of, and this is the fourth thing you need to know about them, Caudillos. Caudillos. Okay. They're essentially cartels. Yeah. Um, they're running uh, all like a pirate kind of scheme, raiding ships and stuff like that. They're stealing from people, moving goods. There's probably drugs involved. You might be surprised. History doesn't really tell you too much about the drugs they're moving. Is that shocking to you? But they are using drugs, right? We've talked about alcohol use and how it's really caused a bunch of burdens for Europe and stuff like that. Um, anyway, Cadillos are going to pull power away from democracy and cause corruption. <laughs> they're small militaries controlled by a single person and a single person or a private citizen for profit. They're cartels. The cartel's goal is to make money selling drugs. The Caudillo's goal is to wreak havoc and gain more power for themselves. So Caudillo's, they are, pay, um, they are pulling power away from the democracy into these small militaries. Okay, so that's what you need to know about Bolivia. In a personal note, he was so brokenhearted, he just kind of walked into the jungle and died of a broken heart. Because of his Yeah, because everything was failing, because it was still super corrupt. His dream didn't come true, and he could see the corruption really coming, and things weren't really changing the way he hoped. And then they found his body, in uh, above his heart, there was a picture of George Washington and his little letters. Mm, so cute. So cute. All right. Next one. Okay. Uh, let's go to Puerto Rico and Cuba. So part of the Cuban Revolution. Absolutely, because in, uh, in Cuba and Puerto Rico, what language do they speak, Andreas? Uh, Spanish. And who is their mother country? Spanish. There you go. Okay, so it is going to be, the rebellion is going to be led by Lola. Oh my goodness, if it's a Lola, it's a? Yeah. yeah. Now, is this the only woman involved in a revolutions anywhere? Hell no, but this is the first woman who's getting her due claim. Keep that in mind. Is Lola Rodriguez de Tio, okay? She is going to write, so she's a total boss, about enlightenment ideas which will trigger rebellion. Okay, so she is going to write about enlightenment ideas and inspire the islands of Cuba and Puerto Rico to rebel. <clears> okay, <throat> Philippines. Well, this one is going to be super controversial. Not right now at the moment, but it will be. Here we go. The Philippines, which are also led by the Spanish, because if it's a Creole, it has to be controlled by the? Spanish. There you go. So, Spain controls the Philippines, okay? 
A guy named Jose Rizal is going to be writing anti-Spanish newspaper ads and articles, anti-Spanish, essentially propaganda. And mysteriously, he ends up in jail and dies. Is this shocking to us? No. No. Okay, so he's a beloved author. Okay, he gets arrested, thrown in jail, and then he dies. And all of Spain begins rebelling. Now, I'm telling you right now, please listen. All the, the Philippines rebel, not Spain. All the Philippines begin rebelling. Now, the rebellion actually isn't, they're not going to actually gain their full and true independence until the 1930s. Because Spain is going to lose the Spanish-American War to the... And when we take over, do we give them their full rights? No, we don't. We keep the same colonial oppression. They don't get their independence until almost World War II. Damn is right. Damn is right. But we'll get to that. What do you got? I thought if he wrote propaganda, isn't that kind of like support the Spanish government? So, because um, it, it's starting to call for freedom from the Philippines. It's propaganda because not all of it is substantiated by facts. Okay. Yeah, but it's anti-Spanish uh, propaganda. Okay, your next thing is nationalism and unification. <coughs> yeah, so skip a space, center it, nationalism and unification. Okay, first one is going to be Italy. So, Italy is going to be unified, first by Count Camillo Cavour. He's going to be the first time. What? No. That's just a title, like king. Count Camillo de Cavour. He's the first guy to attempt it, but it's finalized by Giuseppe Mazzani. So, Count Camillo Cavour <coughs> is going to start the process, but it is Giuseppe Mazzani who is actually going to finish the unification of Italy. Okay, fun fact. In, oh, by the way, I do want to point out, you know how we talked about the Philippines? A uh, newspaper editor got arrested and then died in jail, and it triggered all of these uh, rebellions. Well, that's what's happening in Iran right now. You know that, yes? yes okay. Yes. Right now in Iran, a woman had her hijab on incorrectly, and she got arrested by the morality police, thrown in jail, and then she dies, which is not the first time a woman has died in the uh, controls of the morality police. And now, for the last month, the women of Iran, and men, but it's really being spearheaded by women, are literally burning down the country. So much so that an Iranian rock climber in Korea over the weekend took off her hijab and climbed the mat rocks in competition without her hijab on, her, her hijab. With that being said, after she went to the Iranian Seoul embassy, she was forced to surrender her passport. She was put on a plane, and no one has heard anything from her except this weird cryptic thing posted on her Instagram that says, my hijab fell off, I would never break the law. It has now become a huge international scandal. Every country is now trying to find out where this woman is, if she has been killed for this demonstration. So it's a huge deal. So the people of Iran are literally in revolt right now. They've shut off the internet. <laughs> okay? Same thing. Uh, these types of revolutions are happening because of these similar events that continue to happen. Count Camilla Cavour. Now, it's going to unify all of the regions of Italy. Anyone here been to Italy? If you've been to Italy, you've been maybe to Tuscany, you've been to Rome, you've been to the southern part. They're all super unique, right? All the food, well, this is the first time it's unified, okay, under Count Camilla Cavour and Mazzini. However, in 2022, <coughs> they are trying to divide themselves back into individual countries again. Yeah, the northern part doesn't want to be affiliated with the southern part anymore. 
uh, because the northern part um, doesn't have as much immigrants, and there's a ton of immigrants coming from Africa to the southern part, and it's really pulling down their economy and stuff like that. And it has a lot of other issues, also some racism sparkled in there. Um, and so it's causing like this huge shift, and they've never really all liked each other. So it's caused lots of problems throughout history. What do you got, Ella? Uh, I saw a question about the Republicans. Yes, they also have like fascist problems. And they also have like super, super ultra conservative uh, viewpoint, which to the south is very conservative, to the north is very liberal. So there's just like complete different dichotomies of like personalized beliefs because they were always seen as individual countries. And then they got unified. And now they're like, well, this sucks. I don't want this. And it's been a fight since the beginning. Okay. What you do need to know is this term of real Poltic. It's going to keep coming up going forward. Real Poltic is using cultural iconography to trigger emotional response about politics. Iconography. Cultural iconography that trigger an emotional response. An example of that for the United States would be bald eagles, right? How many bald eagles have you seen on TV with all these damn political ads, right? Every single commercial for a Democrat, Republican, or Independent is showing you a bald eagle because bald eagles make us feel like, damn, yeah, America, woo, look at those wings, we're free, yeah? Okay, all that stuff. The idea if someone says freedom, everyone's like, yeah, freedom, and like, yeah. What other things do we say to get us all riled up? Football. Football. Yeah. Football. All that. Beer's not really our thing. It's more of a German. Thing. No, it's not. It's Europeans have way bigger drinking problems than we do. <laughs> way bigger. Yeah, they started drinking at 16, illegally. In Ireland, if you can reach over the bar, you can drink. <laughs> Drinking is not an American problem, it's a European problem. It's a huge problem in Ireland specifically. Moving forward, which is not the topic of today. Italy's unification, real politic. It is used to rally, put a big star. All revolutions mentioned prior to this are enlightenment based. So, the American Revolution is inspired by the? The Haitian Revolution is inspired by the? Italian Unification is inspired by? Enlightenment. Okay? So, get underneath it, right? German Unification. Say that. It unifies people, it pulls people together, and that, that's how they kind of manipulate people into feeling something. <coughs> German unification. You need to know it is justified by nationalism. Underline it, circle it, put it in a square, whatever you need to do, it's unique. Nationalism is a deep devotion to one's country. Nationalism is a deep devotion to one's country that can slash will lead to aggression. Okay, I consider myself a patriot of the United States. Uh, you buy now, and it's only going to get worse, frankly. You hear me talk shit about the United States, yes? Yes. Okay. I love the United States. I live here. I have chosen to be here. Um, we keep threatening to flee to Europe, <laughs> but we're not. Don't start the rumor Ben is leaving, okay? We're not leaving, but we do joke about running off to Italy, uh, England. Not Italy. No, not Italy. Italy's got their own problems, as we just talked about. Uh, anyway, I love the United States. I consider myself a patriot. A patriot is someone who believes in the country and the values this country stands for. But are pragmatic. <laughs> I am not a nationalist. I am not a nationalist. A nationalist believes in the superiority of their country 
and will use violence to defend it. So if you talk shit about the United States, I'm going to say, well, the United States is flawed. However, it is the greatest country because of this, this, and this. And if you say, well, the United States still sucks, and I'm going to be like, okay. If I was a nationalist, and you say America sucks, and I'm going to say, well, your country sucks, and then you're going to say America sucks, and then I'm just going to pummel the shit out of you. <laughs> and then I'm going to teach you that America's awesome. But it's justified because of the deep division. Yes, yes. Nationalism always leads to aggression, which will lead to some tort, sort of violence. What do you got? Sure, Evan. Okay, German unification is caused by nationalism led by a guy named Otto von Bismarck. Otto von Bismarck. There are only two Germans you have to know in this class. Otto von Bismarck and Hitler. Pretty much every answer is going to be Otto von Bismarck. Literally, maybe one or two questions. Every Otto von Bismarck is always the answer. If it's Germany, it's always Otto von Bismarck. There's only two Germans you need to know for the entire course, which is Otto and Bismarck and Hitler, and it's pretty much always Bismarck because Bismarck will keep coming up. We are going to be saying his name in seven weeks. I usually teach you a name and then we forget about it. Yes, we will talk about Bismarck for months in this class. What do you got? Because he literally changes everything about Germany. <coughs> Here we go. So Bismarck, his quote, you know how we have taxation without representation is a rallying cry, is blood and iron. By the way, that's amazing. If you would like to describe and iron. blood and iron, that's his, quote. that's his quote. If you would like to describe Bennett's teaching style, I would prefer you describe blood and iron is how I'd like it described. Okay, it is blood because he uses war. Okay, he's brutal. Boss, but brutal. Okay, and he industrializes Germany. That's the iron. Yes, in a big banner. Who cares about Teacher of the Year? I want Bennett is known for blood and iron. When's your birthday? When we get some? No, you don't really need it. My wall's already broken. Well, right now they suck, really. I know. I'm just terrible. Like we had things to do. No. Oh, my God. Could you imagine if you were a parent who shows up in my room and being like, what the hell? Can you hang in your room? room? Like in your whole room? Like your bedroom? No. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know blood and iron. You also need to know real Poltic. And real Poltic is what, Zoe? There you go. So they're going to talk about beers, because Germany is known for their beers, coming back to your comment. They're going to have, like, the big sign. I don't know, with their iconography. Yeah. I saw a video of this lady in Germany who was holding, like, eight of those massive signs, and it was insane. Moving forward to more culturally not significant things, but academically significant, is um, they're gonna, he's going to use real politics to justify this unification. Okay, now you do perfect. Okay, Balkans I'm fine with. All right, Industrial Revolution is your next major heading, please. Okay, now the Industrial Revolution is going to happen 1650s to um, 1800s. Then we have the second industrial revolution, which we'll get to um, going through. Okay, so you need to know the term pre-industrial. We have cottage industries. Pre-industrial, we have a thing called cottage industries. <coughs> okay, cottage industries. Women, who is doing it? Women. Women are making extra things to sell for profit. Write it down. Cottage industries are when women are making extra things to sell for profit. That's what we call cottage industries. So if I need a bunch of thread for a sewing project, I'm going to make extra thread. If I'm baking a pie, instead of just making one, it's the same mess to make two. And then I'll sell the second, sell the second spool of thread to make profit. This is the original way to make items. 
at home in your spare time. Okay? Then we have the agricultural revolution. So we have cottage industries that have been happening since the dawn of time, right? So now we're in the agricultural. Technically, it's called the second agricultural revolution, but this is like the agricultural revolution that I'm teaching you. It is science. Science is being used to improve farming techniques. Science is being used to increase improve farming techniques. Examples are the seed drill. So beforehand, you used to just chuck seeds on the ground and some would grow. Do you think you have a high yield or low yield? Low. Well, because who's eating it? The birds. The birds. Okay, the seed drill is literally a drill and drops a seed in it. So are we going to have a higher yield or lower yield? High. Higher yield, which means we have more food. Okay. We also have crop rotation. Okay, you should know that. Three fields, uh, it's crop rotation. Um, they're replenishing soil. I don't need to really know too much about it. Anyway, okay, what you do need to know about it, it is going to increase food supply, which increases, okay? So it increases food supply, AKA increases population. Less people have to farm. Michael, you better pick your head up. I'm teaching like a champion up here. Thank you. Okay. Increases food, increases population, less people are needed to farm. So all of a sudden you have a bunch of people sitting around needing to find a way to make money. So what are they starting to do? Specialization. Specialization of labor is going to start happening where people are going to start refining their skills. This has already happened in what part of the world? China. China. It's now finally happening in Europe. Okay. And this is what is going to cause the actual industrial revolution. Write it down. So, the Industrial Revolution is your next subheading. Yeah. No, I know, we're in the, but we're, it's actually happening. It oh. has to have the second Agricultural Revolution to actually trigger the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution is based on mechanization. It is based on mechanization. Yeah, yeah, it's the using of machines to make work easier. So mechanization is using machines to make work easier. We are starting to see this with household tasks first, and then that will be moved to factories. You need to know that. It'll start in household tasks and then move to factories because the machines are too big to be in homes. You can write that down. That's why we have the creation of factories. Put a big star. This is the first time people leave the home to go to work. And where are they going? Factories. Okay, yeah. so <clears throat> major inventions you have to know are the spinning jenny and the water frame. Spinning jenny and the water frame. Major and new technologies are the spinning jenny and the water frame. Both of these are, are needed for textiles. What is a textile? What's a textile, Sailor? It's not clothes, it's the fabric, yes. So a textile is the actual just like square piece of cloth that eventually will be cut and sewed to make fabric, uh, to make clothes. It's not clothes, it's textiles. Put a big star. Textiles are the number one product in the world until the 1930s. Nineteen thirty. Um, eventually, it's going to be new, just like technology, cars, um, like gadgets, things like that. Tool stands, but before it's all clothes. Okay, major changes of technology. Interchangeable parts. What are interchangeable parts? You should know this before. Bella. Yeah, instead of having specialized things that you can only buy from one company, like for instance, all your screws and stuff are all the same. It's just different sizes, yes? Okay, that's interchangeable parts. 
Uh, specialization of labor, okay, which is all really going to be done by Ford and the assembly line. These are three major inventions you have to be aware of. Specialization of labor, each person has a special role on the assembly line. And Ford is the guy who creates the assembly line, which we'll be talking about in more detail next week, uh, in week 12. Okay? Now, three of them, interchangeable parts, specialization of labor. And assembly line. Okay, these are the things that transform the entire world. Okay, so your next heading, subheading, is causes of the Industrial Revolution. Okay, so we understand that we had to have the Agricultural Revolution. We before knew we had cottage industries that led to the Industrial Revolution economically. We have the Agricultural Revolution, which allows population to boom, and that's why the Industrial Revolution happened. For the Industrial Revolution to actually occur, every country that industrializes, write it down, every country that industrializes has to have two natural resources, which is what your map was. Did you love your map? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an annoying one. <laughs> I told you it was annoying though, did I not, Micah? I warned you. So you, need two what? you need two natural resources. The first one is iron ore, O-R-E, iron ore. Iron ore, comes from the ground, which is why it's called a? Well, natural resource, it comes from the ground. When you heat up and refine that iron ore, it makes? Iron. If you superheat that iron, it turns into? Steel. Steel, yes. So you cannot tell me iron is a natural resource. It's not, it's a refined product of iron ore. The second thing is coal. So if a country industrializes, it has to have iron ore and coal. And that's what your map was all about, ladies and gentlemen. It was all the iron ore deposits and coal deposits. Okay. The first country in the world to industrialize is England. England has the largest deposits of what two natural resources? Iron ore. And coal. Yeah. Iron ore and coal. England is the first country. It also has lots of waterways to move goods. But we'll get to it. Goodbye. I crushed it. We got exactly where we needed to. Goodbye. Please leave. Yeah, of course. First is awful. So annoying.